All right, so the purpose of this uh, video is to uh, demonstrate the effect of uh, the advantages of using uh, off-camera flash to help light uh, any subject relative to the background. Uh, I've chosen a little setup scene here um, as a demonstration for the photo class that I teach. And people were interested in what is, uh, why would I want to use high speed sync and what's the advantage and disadvantages of doing so. And in fact, more general question, what's the advantage of using flash over just using our, um, natural light. So what I've got here on my first uh, slide is the setup that I was using for this demonstration. Uh, it's basically a little desktop uh, setup, could be used for macro, could be used for tabletop kind of uh, situation. And the principles apply equally well to, uh, you know, if you are out shooting somebody on the roof of a building in full sunlight in the middle of August, uh, and you've got buildings in the background that are very bright, and you want to darken down those, ba those buildings, you want to shoot at a wide open aperture uh, to give you control of the depth of field on your subject but let the background go out of out of uh, uh, focus and the advantage of high speed sync is it does exactly that it allows us to in essence overwhelm the sunlight we can basically cancel out the sunlight in fact all of the ambient light and then assuming we have a powerful enough flash then we can light the uh, subject with our uh, external flashes and uh, we can use ambient light if we want to um, control the background lighting. The shutter speed has a direct influence on the exposure of the background, but the shutter speed really doesn't have any influence on the uh, exposure that is coming, the, the light contribution to the exposure that is coming from the external flashes. So let me describe the setup I'm using here. Um, I have my camera, it's a Micro Four Thirds Olympus camera set up on a little tabletop tripod and I've got it uh, a trigger uh, in the hot shoe. It's an accessory flash that acts as a wireless trigger for an Olympus FL600R flash which is off to the left in this picture. And I've got that sit it up, sitting um, slightly behind the subject pointing toward the camera and I'm trying to avoid spillover or minimize the amount of spill of the flash uh, onto the background. In my case, the background is a light box, just tipped vertically. I put a, a manual on the, with writing on it on the front of the light box, just so I would have some text to show you uh, that we're starting out with the subject sharp and the background uh, also has enough depth of field that it is sharp. And the idea here is we eventually want to get to a point where we can darken down the background relative to the subject and we want to be able to throw the background out of focus by using a very small uh, aperture and get just the subject in focus and everything else out of focus. Um, I also have, if you notice over on the right side, there is a white box which I have set up and is acting as sort of a fill card, a white fill card. So the flash will be firing, hitting the left side of the subject, which is a little statue of a person. And um, we're, so we're gonna get a lot of light on the camera left side of the subject's face. The camera right side is gonna be silhouetted completely because the flash cannot hit that side directly. And the idea of the, fill, the, the white box is gonna act as a fill card. I'm not gonna use it for most of the shots, but I will use it for the final shots in this sequence to show you that we need to fill in those shadows on the, uh, on the shadow side of the face. Okay, And right now I have the camera set up so with it's tethered into the laptop computer that's sitting over on the right side. <clears throat> and I'm running two pieces of software on the uh, computer. And um, let me switch to the computer scene. All right, the computer is basically a, a low-level gaming laptop. I'm running Lightroom uh, 6 in background on the computer, and that's showing up. The image we're seeing is uh, in the center of the screen is, is the uh, loop view in Lightroom. 
And on the outside edges, on the left and right panels, basically, is a, is a separate program, and it's called Olympus Capture. It's a free software program uh, from Olympus. And it's basically a tethered tethering program. So what happens is I have the camera connected with a, uh, a cable to the USB port of the computer and so that we can tether and it, we were transferring images from the, the taken from the, the camera as they are taken and we are sending them to the computer where they are stored on a fo in a folder uh, on the desktop and then at the same time I have Lightroom open and running and Lightroom is set up so that it is watching that particular folder and whenever any images are dumped into that folder Lightroom grabs the images and logs them into the Lightroom catalog and then displays them in the middle of the screen as we can see the picture of the statue at the moment. Uh, some features of the Olympus Capture software if I zoom in uh, we do get a live histogram up in the top left corner below that there is a live view which looks very dark at the moment in this picture uh, because I have it set for um, a uh, one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed uh, with the aperture wide open and at the uh, ISO set at 200 ISO which is the native ISO of the uh, this Olympus camera um, and, and I have the flash turned off at the moment that's why you're seeing a live view that's very dark to show you what it will look like when the flash fires the view down below is actually the view of the last picture I took when we actually the last captured image that I transferred which was using the flash. Over on the other side we have the controls for um, the uh, Olympus software and for the camera and basically we have in the center section here uh, we have the super control panel controls so we can control the shutter speed 8,000th of a second, the aperture f1.8, ISO is 200 I'm set for cloudy white balance. There's some JPEG settings. I'm set for second curtain sync on the uh, flash. And I've got the stabilizer turned on, the image stabilizer and the camera turned on to auto on the tripod. It basically doesn't use it. Um, we have flash compensation as zero uh, f-stops at the moment. And I'm using single auto focus with manual touch-up. The face detection uh, software is turned off at the moment. I'm shooting both a large fine JPEGs and RAW images. And uh, if I come down to this bottom section, the RC mode, this is the remote control panel that is used to control any flashes that are uh, external flashes that are being controlled directly by the camera. So I'm in uh, the, I won't, I'm only using a single flash, it's in group A, and I have it set for high speed sync and for TTL operation through the lens operation and you see currently it's set for a minus four f-stops of flash compensation the flash compensation okay uh, and, and we're set for the uh, high-speed sync mode and channel one is just the radio channel that it's using so to take a picture all I have to do basically is come down and click on the camera button down at the bottom and it will uh, it's set up to focus on the eye of the statue at the moment if we look over at the live view, you can see there's a little box, and that little box indicates which focusing box uh, the camera is using for its focus point. All right. So basically, we are simply able. All I have to do is press the uh, use the mouse to press that shutter button, and we will capture the image. If I come back for a second to the to our general setup, all right. So again, the uh, external flash is off to the left side sitting up on a box. I'm going to change the angle of that throughout this video because I need, uh, right now you're getting some light obviously it's just going to hit the subject. It's also going to spill onto the background to some extent and I'm going to try to maneuver things around to try to minimize the amount of light spillage I get going onto the background. And initially I don't have this white box here for the early photos. Alright, so let's get started. So. This is the uh, scene that we <clears throat> are typically seeing with the um, just taking a with the flash turned off and just taking a normal daylight exposure through the camera. The camera, by the way, is uh, using a 25 millimeter lens and uh, it's capable of opening to f 1.8.
All right, so I have my conditions here on the left side. We're currently set for a one second exposure at F22. Uh, then in the ISO, I'm going to keep constant throughout this entire demonstration at 200. All right. You might also note over on the other side, I've left that panel open because you can look there and you can see if the flash fired or not. So right now it says uh, did not fire. So we're basically shooting this with just the ambient light. Now I'm sitting in, a, in my office and I have windows, a bank of big windows right behind me, behind my desk. So we got very flat, even lighting coming in. This is probably 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it's a, it's a sunny day outside. So we're basically, it's not, it's not the equivalent of full sunlight outdoors, you know, in the middle of summer, but it's pretty close. So we have a lot of light coming in, which allows me to stop down to F22 at this point and use a one second exposure and still get a, uh, you know, a, 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 a good normal exposure. Now, a couple of comments about the exposure. As you can see, the lighting is very flat on the, uh, on the subject. And, um, there's very little, in essence, separation between the subject and the background. Um, not very flattering light. It's good light for getting the exposure, but it's lousy light for uh, showing any dramatic lighting or any creative lighting. So, and the other problem we have is the background is lighter than the subject. Okay, eventually, and the other, then the third problem is that the background is very is sharp. We have enough depth of field here, certainly at f22 that the subject's in focus and the background's also in focus. In a lot of situations, we can improve the lighting dramatically by moving it off camera and moving it off to the side so we have side lighting coming in. Side lighting wraps around your subject and gives, makes them look more round and gives a more three-dimensional quality to the light. The other thing we'd like to do is we'd like to emphasize the subject, so we generally want to light the subject brighter than we do the background. So in this, I want to reverse the current lighting situation and make the background darker, the subject brighter, and I want the background to go as much out of focus as I can get it. So that's sort of the objective of what we're doing here with using the flash. All right. So I'm just dropping by one f-stop, the lighting levels uh, down. And that's sort of maybe, I don't want the background any brighter than that to, uh, to start with uh, or, you know, in my final shot. Uh, but I do want to have the subject be brighter. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start taking the lighting down while it's still at F22. And I want to basically knock out the sun. I want to make sure that I can get rid of all the ambient light that we have in a scene. This is very useful whenever you're doing anything with flash because you're actually taking two pictures. You're taking a picture of the ambient light, which is the background subjects mostly, the, the background uh, uh, items in, in your image, and then you're using the flash to light up your main subject, usually in the foreground or the middle ground. Okay, so we need to know what latitude we have, where, how much the flash is adding to the overall scene. And the easiest way to do this is to figure out exactly where we lose all of the ambient lighting. So if I started at a one second exposure and I'm dropping at one f-stop, two f-stops down to a, or three f-stops actually down to an eighth of a second at this point, bringing it down four f-stops to a fifteenth of a second, five f-stops we're down to a thirtieth of a second. So five f-stops below a normal exposure, we're basically cutting out all of the ambient light. It's as though we're shooting at midnight with no lights on at all. Okay. I go down to a 60th of a second, and we're definitely totally blacked out by the time we hit a 60th of a second at f22. All right, now we turn on the flash. I'm, I'm back to 1 30th of a second for the shutter speed, which corresponds to this black scene for ambient light. And I'm just going to turn the flash on at, and at zero compensation and fire it. And when I do that, the TTL uh, it's in TTL condition, so the camera says, okay, I've got enough light, and it turns the flash off at the appropriate time. Now, I have the flash angled uh, more pointing to, I'm getting a lot more spill onto the background than I was hoping for in this situation. I want to light up the subject, and you can see, obviously, I'm lighting up the left side, the camera left side of the subject. Uh, the camera right side of the subject's face is, is going to be a total silhouette because there's no way for the flash, it's not bouncing off anything to bounce back in and fill in those shadows. 
But what I want to do here is I want to angle the light a little bit more toward the camera and away from the background to try to get a little less light on the background and more light on the subject and trying to avoid, you know, shooting the light, the flash directly into my, uh, my lens because I do have a lens uh, hood on, but you still, if you don't want to get lens flare going across the uh, lens because that will reduce the overall contrast of the, of the image. Okay, so I've angled the light a little bit better here uh, <clears throat> so that I minimize minimizing the light on the background and, and putting more light on the subject itself. You'll notice, however, the background is still at, at f22, the background is still uh, in focus and too sharp. All right, I tried in this situation to move the, I think I moved the camera a little bit closer to the, uh, to the statue in the hopes that uh, I, I, and, and I pushed, I think, the, the light, the flash back a little bit closer toward the background and turned it more toward the subject. Uh, the problem with doing this is that I'm, I'm for this 25 millimeter lens, I have a minimal focus, focusing distance. And I think I'm closer than like four inches. I'm getting just beyond the part where I could actually focus on the subject. So I'm going to have to move the camera back and make sure I, I can get the subject in focus while I'm trying to throw out the background. All right, the, um, I am able here, as you can see, that I can play with the compensation, the flash compensation, um, to tell the flash to intentionally underexpose by one, two, three, four, five f-stops. And I think I went down about two f-stops, and that's, you know, so that I can retain detail in the side of the statue without blowing out any highlights there because of the flash. And when I do that, of course, the spill light is also, it's, the flash is darker on the subject. It's also darker on the background. So that's why the background is getting darker also. Okay. And um, here's where I, I move the camera back, I think, to its uh, normal, uh, to its initial position uh, so that I'm sure I can focus uh, and get a sharp focus on the uh, statue. And uh, we'll worry about throwing the background out of, out of focus. All right, so we're here we're at a 30th of a second and uh, f22 at 200 ISO. So we do, um, at this point, we, do, we are firing the flash and we have it, uh, a flash compensation built in of probably minus, I think it's minus three f-stops around here at this point. Okay, so I'm still playing a little bit at this point, uh, angling things around. Um, in this case now, though, I have also changed the f-stop and the uh, shutter speed. What I'm trying to do is maintain about the same overall exposure I had in this image, but I want to start blurring out the background. So how do we blur out the background? If we're at f22, we, if we go to a wider aperture, I'm going to come down to f8. That's a 3 f-stop difference in, in uh, d uh, the uh, depth of field. And that should give us a much, um, much less depth of field and start to blur out the background. To compensate for that, because if I just do that, uh, I would have much, way too much light coming into the uh, scene. So I'm going to change the shutter speed from the 1 30th of a second. I'm going to change it by 3 f-stops. So that's going to take it up to 1 2 50th of a second. So the 1 2 50th at f8 is the equivalent of... 130th at f22. So we got basically the same pre-exposure we had in the, in the previous slide, uh, but as you notice the background is getting a little bit fuzzier. Right. Going another three f-stops, so now I can open up the, the uh, aperture to f28, and that blurs the background quite a bit, which is very helpful. But in doing so, to keep the same general exposure, I have to change the exposure from 1 to 50th of a second up to 1 2,000th of a second. Now, interesting, at 1 to 50th of a second is the sync speed for this flash. So if I did not go into high-speed sync mode, I'd be limited to only being able to shoot it at a 2 50th of a second, all right? which would limit how, much, um, uh, how dark I can make the background, basically. And if I want to open up the, ap the, uh, uh, the aperture as much as possible, to blur out the background even more. So, in any case, all right, so, th so this is the 1 2,000th of a second at f2.8. This lens will go to f1.8, so I'm going to do that. I'm opening up to f1.8, and I'm changing the uh, shutter speed up to 1 5,000th of a second. I also, in this one, uh, took off the minus 3 f-stop uh, 
flash compensation. <coughs> it went to zero f-stops of flash compensation, and that, that obviously made the scene a lot brighter, uh, three f-stops brighter than the previous one. Okay, and I did that just to make sure that I have enough power. One of the things that happens when you go from um, the sync speed, one two fiftieth of a second for the flash, or slower shutter speeds, is that at that point, when you take the flash, the with a, a, a focal plane shutter, the first curtain opens all the way before the second curtain starts to close behind it. So you can you only need to pop the flash once, and you can cover the entire image area of the sensor with that single pop. When you start going to high speed sync mode, what happens is your the first shutter curtain, by the time it opens all the way, the second shutter curtain has to start closing before it's open all the the first one's open all the way uh, to get the timing right. And as a result, you end up with a slit going across your image area. You're not exposing the entire image when you pop the flash. You're only exposing a part of it that is corresponds to the opening of the slit that's moving across the image from top to bottom or left to right. And so the faster and faster shutter speeds you go to, if you go up, by the time you get up to one eight thousandth of a second, you only have a t tiny little narrow slit that is traveling very rapidly across the image area to capture the scene. And to, to get the flash to pop and cover every part of the scene, the flash has to pop several times, seven or eight times, to, to make sure it, it's uh, put flash onto every part of the image area. And in doing that, that reduces the power, the out available output, total output power of your flash, you know, by a whole bunch of stops as you're doing that. So I did this just to make sure I have enough power to, uh, to light up the scene by the time I get up to a 5,000th of a second. Okay, I'm actually going up to 1 8,000th of a second to test it. And sure enough, I still have enough power that I can do this. So I'm wide open on the aperture here. You notice the background is as fuzzy as it's going to get, but it is nicely, you know, soft. You can't read any of the writing. And I still can focus on and have enough depth of field to cover the uh, statue, and not, uh, but not have to worry about uh, trying to get enough depth of field to cover the, uh, the background, which I want to be out of focus in this case. And I also want the background to be darker than the uh, foreground, which you can see, obviously, it is. So at this point, I can start darkening down. Uh, I, I can start adding flash compensation and, uh, and take control of the lighting. Okay. So at this point, what I did is, this is still fill flash, but I brought the exposure compensation from z zero down to, I think, about minus three f-stops. And so, of course, the spill on the background went down by three f-stops compared to that picture. And the, the direct lighting on the side of, of uh, the left side of the statue's face also went down uh, by three f-stops. All right. So this is basically more or less where we're, we're in the right ballpark here in terms of where we want to be. Now I, now I need to start adjusting the light yeah, to give me the, the balance. I'm going to add, I'm going to add a fill card on the, using that white box on the right side of the image to bounce some of the flash back into the right side of the face, the camera right side of the face. Okay. And let's see. All right, so just to, I went back here from the, the 8,000th of a second, wide open at f1.8, uh, I went back to a 250th of a second to show you that when we come out of the high speed mode and go back into regular flash mode, uh, that in this situation that um, we do have the, the very narrow depth of field because we're still at f1.8. But, but the background got a lot brighter because we're at uh, a 250th of a second instead of an 8,000th of a second. Okay? So now we, we can go anywhere in between, basically, and control how much light we're getting on the background. And I just have to make sure then that I've got adequate light on the subject to, to see what I'm doing here. Okay, and just to show you again, I, I, in this particular case, I went all the way down to one second and F22 which was our ambient lighting conditions, just to show you uh, what that looks like by comparison. So we have an image here we could have taken where it's a, a decent exposure, but it's not a very exciting lighting, and there's no depth to the lighting or to the such situation. It's very flat, just ambient lighting. Okay, and um, and then we had this situation where we are using the flash at the at the sync speed, 
and we were able to, to bore out the background to uh, uh, as much as we want at this point, but the background still is much brighter than we want, and we're sort of limited until we go into high sinks that we can't really go down much lower than this. All right. All right, so what we've done at this stage is, let's see, let's start there. We're at the, we're at the sink speed, we're at the one-eighth of a uh, uh, F1.8 uh, for the aperture, and this is with the flash turned off, okay? That was with the, that was with the flash on, but dialed down to like minus uh, uh, three f-stops or so. And this is with the flash turned off completely. So three f-stops, we're getting very, very little light coming from the flash at the moment. It is, it, uh, it, it, it and in this case right now, we're not, we're not firing the flash at all. This is just the ambient light, sort of the edge of the ambient light. Whereas when we went back to this one, we did fire the flash, but the flash was contributing very, very little to the scene. Okay. And in this one also, we still have the flash turned off at this point, and I'm down to a thousand, uh, one over a thousandth of a second wide open. Just showing you that, in fact, that the we really can control and wipe out the ambient light. Uh, even, even though we're wide open at f1.8, we can wipe out the ambient light if we use a high enough shutter speed. Okay, and this is now turning the flash on. Okay, so there was a little bit of ambient light here, not much, but a little bit showing through. And now the flash is contributing more light to the uh, background lighting, the ambient lighting in the background, uh, because of the spill coming off the flash. But we are now able to get light onto the subject. And I've also, in this situation, I've added the, that fill card on the right side so that we're filling in the shadows. All right, so this is where you start to get serious about what you want the image to look like. All right, and just to, to show you, I've just brought the flash compensation here. I think the flash compensation was around, it was, I don't, I'm not sure, it might have been like minus one uh, f-stop at this point, and I brought it down, I think, to minus four f-stops at this point, okay? And, and doing so does, you know, bring down the, uh, the it, we're getting less spill going onto the background. So that's getting darker and obviously uh, very little light getting to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the main subject. Okay. And I brought it back up now. I'm just going to fine tune. I'm playing with the flash compensation here, looking for a good balance. And... Again, playing with the angle of the white box on the other side that's giving the fill on the right side and trying to increase a little bit more fill and not trying to wash out the uh, highlights on the side of his face that are on the, on the camera left side of the face. All right. And again, just playing around with conditions here. We're up to a four thousandth of a second at this point. So we went from a thousandth of a second, we went up to a two thousandth of a second, and you see that darkens the background down. And this isn't having any effect on the uh, on the subject itself because the the, the he's the shutter speed doesn't really matter for whatever is being lit by just the flash. And again, uh, in this particular case, I did increase the comp the flash compensation. So you would expect that the background to have gotten even darker, and it did. But I opened up the flash compensation a little just to throw a little more light. I should have done the one in between to show you, but I didn't uh, take the one in between. Okay, so we're at an eight thousandth of a second, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the background being about at that level, and now it's just a question of fine-tuning the flash compensation a little to, to make sure I'm not burning out highlights on the uh, camera left side of the, of the statue. This is where I <laughs> gave it positive flash compensation instead of negative flash compensation. So you can see the flash still has enough power, even though we're pulsing it, we still have enough power uh, to wipe out the scene if we have to. All right, and coming back down, <clears throat> probably a little bit too far coming down on the flash compensation. We lose the background completely. Don't want to go that far. And I'm just sort of looking for a happy median in between, and we're getting pretty close right there. Okay, and in fact, that's the final exposure I settled on. So we have the background being dark and blurry the way I want. I want separation of the statue from the background. I want the, him to look three-dimensional with some wraparound lighting. We've got main lighting coming from over on the left side. We've got a fill card kicking light back from the right side. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm fairly happy with that scene. 
The only thing I'd like to do a little bit different is darken down the bottom of the scene a little bit and open up the shadows a little bit more on the fill card. I could bring the fill in closer to do that, but it's easier to do that just in post-processing. So this is my, quote, final image. And what I'm going to do here is show you, um, if I turn the flash off and we take a picture, just to show you that all of the light coming from that scene is coming from the flash, including the little bit of spill there is on the background from directly coming from the flash and whatever spill is coming off of the reflector card and also going to the background. Okay, But basically we've wiped out the sun uh, if we don't use the flash. And this is what I finally settled on for the final image after I brought the image into Lightroom, took it into the develop mode. I used a gradient, a, new, a, a gradient filter on the bottom to darken down the bottom of the image just a little bit. And I used a paintbrush with a highlight slider to lighten up the, sh the, uh, sh um, the shadows on the right side of the statue's face. Okay, I can show you those side by side, I think. Let me bring up... Uh, yeah, let me go down and get that picture and, oops, get that picture. Take those two and if I compare them side by side, okay, you can clearly see, oops, you can see here, this, the uh, picture on the left is the image right out of the camera without any work done to it. Um, and the picture on the right, all I've done is I've darkened down with a gradient, I've darkened down this area right here and I've added just a little bit more uh, fill uh, in uh, by lightening up the shadows on this side of the image and that increasing the the uh, fill there I also increased the fill just a hair bit on the background all right so that's sort of the image I was happy with let me go down and get one more image to show you where we started for a comparison effect uh, let's see, let's go to this one and let's go to a different comparison view. Okay, so this was the image on the far left now is the image we had um, when uh, with just the, just using just the ambient light, no flash at all. Let me get rid of this, make it a little bit bigger. And I can get rid of that bar at the bottom. There we go. Okay, uh, so on the left side here, this the image that, that I've got the white border around, that's our ambient light exposure without using any flash. Very acceptable exposure, but very flat lighting. Not, not very uh, artistic looking, no three-dimensional effect at all. It looks like a flat figure blending into a flat background. And, and again, at F22, we're getting too much depth of field, all right? And in the meantime, going over to using just a one external flash on the, on the, from the left side behind the this, this subject and a, and a fill card on the right side uh, and using high-speed sync, we're able to basically get more wraparound lighting, get control, darken down the background, blur the background, so it's, uh, the, the figure separates nicely from the background and take much better control of our image. And if you get it right in the camera, for the most part, you don't have to do much in post-processing. And it's like you said, I, just from an artistic standpoint, wanted to darken down the bottom just so that your eye doesn't get pulled down there and away from the face of the, of the statue. Okay? And then just open up the shadows just a little bit here. So that basically is... All I wanted to demonstrate, so uh, to me, an awful lot of people I know prefer not to ever use flash, and if they do, they use it directly on camera, where it is, the, the pictures look even worse than the original picture here on the left. Um, but if you take the flash off the camera, get it off to the side, get some side lighting or even backlighting, but preferably side lighting, use a, a single, single flash off to one side, a fill card on the other side, and have the ability to use high-speed sync if you if you need it. Uh, you you really can take total control of the depth of field of your image. You can take control of your main subject separately from your background ambient lighting, um, and it it allows you to be much more artistic in terms of what you are doing.